Watch what he's doing. This is 100% a boxer. Can you find me the record of Bokeyatsky? The Joe Rogan experience is a meeting point for some of the most controversial ideologists in the world. From ufologists to pseudoscientists. But if you do something to hormonally block a child very, very early on, there's no turning back from that. Everyone has a voice on the Joe Rogan podcast. But sometimes, these seemingly tame conversations can become quite heated. Join us as we take you through some of the most intense arguments in Joe Rogan history. Joe Rogan and Eddie Bravo. On Joe Rogan, Experience, 948, regular guest Eddie Bravo made quite a spectacle after he went on a rant defending the Flat Earth conspiracy. Apart from his extensive knowledge of martial arts, Bravo is famous for his vast array of conspiracy theories. This often ranges from rumors swirling around secret government projects to claims as wide as the Flat Earth ideology. On this particular episode, Bravo seemed to push one of Joe's buttons with his outlandish claims and unfounded theories. According to Bravo, the idea that the Earth is round is a carefully orchestrated hoax initiated and promoted by the government to achieve God knows what. In his words, even big national organizations like NASA and the European Space Agency have been spreading lies about the fact that the Earth is round when it is indeed flat. Although Joe tries to keep his cool in this episode, he eventually finds himself screaming. But this pales in comparison to the drama that played out in this next video. Joe Rogan and Steven Crowder Back in 2017, Joe Rogan found himself in one of his most memorable clashes with political commentator Steven Crowder. It all started with Joe asking Crowder what topics he would shy away from while lighting up a pipe. Soon, the two were in a heated debate about the positive impact of marijuana legalization. The conversation then tended into medical marijuana and the health benefits that can be derived from its use. When asked what health issues the drug doesn't work for, Crowder just kept circling around the question, making Joe even more irate than ever. Crowder then stated that his main argument was against the theory that a group of big pharmaceutical companies were fighting against its legalization in certain places. In defense, Joe countered that there have indeed been influential bodies bodies that have lobbied to keep marijuana illegal. Everything just went downhill from there, serving the audience one of the most heated debates ever recorded on the Joe Rogan experience. It was like watching two adults bickering over something they obviously were really passionate about. The following day, Joe had to put out a statement on Twitter, apologizing for how heated the confrontation turned out to be. This was one of Joe's most controversial episodes, but this next one kicks things up a notch. Joe and Seth Dillian in episode 1857 of the Joe Rogan Experience, the host got into a heated argument with guest Seth Dillian when the conversation tended towards the subject of abortion. Dillian, the founder and CEO of the conservative satirical news site, The Babylon Bee, made a statement claiming that even people who have been victims of assault should not be allowed to terminate the resulting pregnancy. But Joe argued in the opposite direction. To drive home his point, Joe even had to bring up his 14-year-old daughter, stating emphatically that he believed no one had the right to force a woman to carry a baby resulting from forced intercourse. A clip of the exchange went viral online after it was shared by pro-life advocate Lila Rose. However, the social media mob turned in Joe's favor, and many of them even expressed their surprise at his stance on the matter. Over the years, Joe had built a reputation for always being on the polar opposite in political matters. So seeing him support abortion rights was a breath of fresh air for both fans and haters. Joe and Dave Portnoy Dave Portnoy, founder of Barstool Sports, was another guest who knew how to get under Joe Rogan's skin. In a 2023 episode, Joe and Portnoy discussed the Jake Paul fight. At one point, the conversation tended towards the possibility of Jake facing Tommy Fury. It was at this point that things took quite a dramatic turn. Whether as banter or as a statement of fact, Portnoy asserted that Tommy Fury was not a real boxer, and Joe was furious. Even more disconcerting was Portnoy's claim that Tommy wouldn't be famous save for his last name. Joe then proceeded to show some of Fury's highlights. What is this that? This guy's a boxer, that man. That doesn't prove anything. Find me the record of Just look at this. Pointing out to Portnoy how skilled a boxer he was. But Portnoy wouldn't back down, and let's just say things got pretty heated between the two. The fight between Jake Paul and Tommy Fury eventually happened, and Fury won by a split decision, further driving home Joe's argument. Tommy Fury is not a real boxer. Of course he's a real boxer. No chance. He's a professional boxer. Joe and Candace Owens. 
Although Joe Rogan usually takes on a calm and composed demeanor no matter how spirited his guests may be, some guests have figured out what buttons to press to get this man raging like a bull. For example, in an old interview with political commentator Candace Owens, Joe almost lost his cool after Owens began downplaying the effects of climate change. I'm sorry that I just don't believe, I don't believe in global warming. In Owens' argument, she expressed how she believed that climate change was just a ploy to get people to pay money. According to her, it wasn't all doom and gloom, and our planet was doing just fine. But Joe wasn't having it, and he tried convincing her to admit ignorance about the subject, rather than spreading unverified information and conspiracy theories. Although Joe tends to stay away from debates that would derail the conversation, this one seemed to click a switch in his mind, sending the whole interaction down a slippery path. Because it's, an, you, ideologi I read it's it. an ideological right-wing point, right. is that global warming isn't real. Right. Joe and Adam Conover. Transgender athletes and the push for more inclusion in the world of women's sports has been a subject of heated debate for a very long time. So when Adam Conover, a man reputed for his vocal support for trans athletes and transgender people in general, made an appearance on the Joe Rogan experience, the audience knew they were in for a treat. From the very start, it was obvious that the two men were on polar opposites concerning the subject matter. This disagreement created palpable tension throughout the podcast. While Joe argued that trans women shouldn't be allowed to compete in women's sports, as they physically possess an advantage over the women, Conover shot back that transgender women had the right to play sports with other women. More arguments followed about the issue of trans children and the morality and ethics of the practice. Although the two men don't get in each other's faces, the tension in the room could be cut with a knife, and it remains one of Joe's most controversial episodes. There's uh, a lot of those people too, so if you're looking for anecdotal evidence and you want to be objective, you kind of have to look I'm at sure both we sides can, of it. I'm sure we can find the anecdotes. Joe and Michalia Peterson. Michalia Peterson, daughter of Canadian clinical psychologist Jordan Peterson, made an appearance on the Joe Rogan experience back in 2021. So it was very severe. It wasn't particularly, like, swollen. My joints just disintegrated. And the discussion between guest and host took a pretty intense turn. As Joe and Peterson talked about the purported benefits of going on a carnivore diet, the conversation tended towards exercise, a subject Joe was very passionate about. As Peterson argued that overweight people do not have the energy to exercise, Joe countered this claim. He argued that most people who claim to be too tired to exercise were just suffering from a lack of discipline. Some people are allergic to cats, some people have no problem with peanuts. Some people eat a, a Brazil nut and they die. Joe even cites an example of some 80-year-old ladies who still take yoga with him. He further emphasizes that except in rare cases, most people can turn their lives around by making the decision to exercise, rather than blaming their laziness on a lack of energy. Joe and Dr. Andrew Hill With a background in the UFC and a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt to his name, it's safe to say Joe Rogan knows a thing or two about martial arts. However, in this episode with Dr. Andrew Hill, an Aikido black belt, things get a bit controversial. Hill, who holds a PhD in cognitive neuroscience from the University of California, Los Angeles, has been called out a few times for advocating the use of drugs in sports. But in this podcast, the discussion centered around the effectiveness of Aikido as a fighting method. While Hill argued that he had seen video footage of Aikido masters who could subdue their opponents without even touching them, Joe remained skeptical. In his own opinion, Aikido was quite limited in real-world combat situations. Joe even pulls up footage of a Turkish wrestler submitting an Aikido practitioner to validate his assertions. It was this old judo, but the way he moved was logical. I mean, I, I understood that what he was doing was effective. But Hill remained adamant. Although the conversation between the two doesn't disintegrate into shouts and name-calling, the tension in the house could be cut with a knife. In the end, both parties had to agree to disagree. Joe and Kurt Metzger. Kurt Metzger has had his fair share of controversy, mostly over his role as the head writer for Amy Schumer's sketch comedy show, Inside Amy Schumer. Since the show first aired, fans have criticized the lack of originality in some of the jokes. Some even go as far as uploading comparison clips and implying that Schumer and her team of writers stole various premises and punchlines from other sketch comedy shows. In an episode of The Joe Rogan Experience, Metzger found another outlet for his defense against the plagiarism claims. Bits that, that Gavin came, made to specifically f her because she said, I play a racist Republican. What? However, Joe wasn't having any of that. 
and continued to call him out. In response, Metzger resorted to blaming people like Gavin McInnes and even declared that anyone who didn't support Amy Schumer was an alt-right troll. In the end, the men laughed off the whole confrontation and the matter was put to rest. Joe and Matt Walsh on the Joe Rogan Experience episode 1895, Joe found himself face-to-face -face with right-wing political commentator Matt Walsh. At first, the discussion revolved around the folly of transgenderism, a subject which both Rogan and Walsh seemed to agree upon. But as soon as the conversation tended towards the issue of homo marriage, things went downhill pretty fast. While Joe argued that homo marriages do not affect hetero relationships in any way or form, Walsh expressed his own view that such a union could damage the very essence of marriage as an institution. That doesn't change the nature of, of marriage, though. It's a, it's a little bit like... Um... To further his argument, Walsh brought up the issue of procreation, expressly stating that one of the purposes of marriage was to reproduce, which was practically impossible when it comes to home marriages. The two butt heads a couple of times during the episode, before finally laying the subject to rest. However, the argument continued online, this time with fans on both sides of the argument, Joe and Brian Dunning. Back in 2008, famous author Brian Dunning released a controversial article titled 10 Most Wanted, Celebrities Who Promote Harmful Pseudoscience. Joe Rogan was number eight on the list, and as you would expect, Joe was not quite pleased with Dunning's review. You're I'm sorry, you are, you are against all reasonably established science. The article, which was published on Dunning's website Skeptoid and a podcast of the same name, labeled Joe as a radical pseudoscientist. Dunning claims that Joe doesn't believe NASA landed on the moon, and that he also believes the Oliver Stone version of the Kennedy assassination, among a host of other wild claims. As soon as the episode started, fans knew there was a blazing inferno coming. Although Joe is always quite welcoming of his guests, fans could sense the tension in the room as the two exchanged points and argued intensively. Rogan was pretty irritated from the start, and he continually countered every single talking point Dunning raised. This episode was so confrontational that it earned Dunning the title of Rogan's most hated guest, Joe and Nick DiPaolo. In a 2019 episode, comedian Nick DiPaolo sat down with Joe Rogan for an in-depth conversation, but things took a heated turn after the topic of Donald Trump was brought up. While discussing the relationship between the then-president and Vladimir Putin of Russia, DiPaolo alluded to previous allegations claiming that the very idea that Trump is working for Putin is silly. But Joe didn't quite agree with this view. Expressing his own opinion, Joe said that he didn't believe Trump was working to undermine American democracy but he believes Putin and Trump have some business dealings going on. As Joe pulled up several articles from different outlets to establish his point, Di Paolo became irate as he trashed every single media source as unreliable and anti-Trump. After a brief back and forth between the two, Joe then accused Di Paolo of resorting to whataboutism. This was after Di Paolo brought up the case of Hillary Clinton, instead of focusing on the argument revolving around Trump. But it's not true that his administration has been more successful than any other administration in history. Later, when Di Paolo eventually conceded that Trump had indeed told lies, he still continued to compare his actions to those of his predecessors. As expected, Joe was quite pissed by this continued stubbornness, and the conversation only went downhill from there. Joe and Tom DeLonge this 2017 episode featuring Blink-182 star Tom DeLonge didn't exactly turn into a heated debate, but the tension in the room on that day makes it worth mentioning. Beyond his music career, DeLonge has also built a reputation as a firm believer in the existence of extraterrestrial beings on our planet. In the podcast, DeLonge explained that he had been obsessed with the idea of UFOs from high school, with Joe admitting that he has also been obsessed with the subject for the longest of times. The audience knew they were in for a treat. Things took an awkward turn after DeLonge delved into the topic of time travel. With several wild claims and unbelievable speculations flying freely, Joe just couldn't stomach it all. After he questioned DeLonge's source of information, the guest revealed that he worked closely with people from NASA and the CIA, and Joe just couldn't stand it anymore. He began questioning how much of DeLonge's claim came from hearsay rather than personal experience. However, the conversation continued on a friendly note, although Joe was never convinced that everything DeLonge said held any iota of truth. Here's our subscribers pick for today. 
Since December 2009, when the Joe Rogan Experience was officially launched, the show has gathered quite the reputation for entertaining some of the most controversial guests and topics most other podcasts would shy away from. The most startling one, however, was with Candace Owens and her denial of climate change. Although Owens was already known as a peddler of wild claims and conspiracy theories, her blatant display of ignorance on the Joe Rogan Experience set her up for even more drags on social media. Today, it remains one of the most intense arguments in Joe Rogan history. Which of these moments is your favorite? Share with us in the comments section down below. Joe and Joey Diaz Comedian Joey Diaz is one of the few people who have made it onto the Joe Rogan experience more than a couple of times. Since the early days of the podcast, Diaz has been a recurring guest, and he also hosts his own popular podcast. In episode 1140 of the Joe Rogan experience, Joe brings up the subject of controversial jokes. This was in the middle of the Me Too movement, and things were taking a dramatic turn in the comedic landscape. In response, Diaz gets immediately heated. His face turned red and he goes on a rant defending the creative freedom that should be accorded to the comedy industry. He further reiterated that it was too late for him to stop using certain offensive words he grew up with. This episode, however, didn't turn into a huge argument. Instead, the audience was just treated to a not-so-rare sight of Diaz going off for five minutes. Joe and Brian Callen Stand-up comedian, actor, and podcaster Brian Callen frequently collaborates with Joe Rogan. However, most of their episodes together often involve them bickering and getting on each other's nerves. In this particular episode, the conversation tended toward schoolyard bullies, and Callen began making some bold claims about how he would handle such a situation. Joe and the other guest on the show, Brendan Schaub, immediately started throwing jibes at Callen, calling him out on his tough-guy persona. This also didn't disintegrate into an argument. However, Joe and Schaub lovingly but firmly advised Callan to do away with the theatrics. Joe even makes the argument that Callan had been hanging out with way too many toxic people who have warped his beliefs. Confrontation or not, the audience was treated to three minutes of Callan's ego being dismantled by his very own friends. Joe and Mark Gordon Dr. Mark Gordon is recognized as a top leader in interventional endocrinology with a reputation for his extensive knowledge of human physiology. On episode 438 of the Joe Rogan Experience, Joe and Gordon found themselves on differing sides. After the conversation tended toward supplements and hangovers, Gordon argued that an antioxidant known as glutathione was capable of curing hangovers and maybe even preventing the side effects of alcohol consumption altogether. Joe, however, couldn't believe Leave these wild claims, and he wasn't afraid to show his strong skepticism. He, however, admitted that he wasn't so knowledgeable about the matter, so he couldn't really call Gordon out on his claims. Although glutathione has been proven to help with fatty liver disease, it hasn't been extensively proven to cure hangovers. Joe and James Kilstein Traveling way back into the early days of the Joe Rogan experience, this episode with comedian James Kilstein is regarded as one of the most heated moments in the podcast's history. At first, the discussion revolved around whether it was acceptable to make jokes about salt. From there, the argument spiraled into a heated debate. The conversation further escalated when both parties began arguing about which was worse between murder or assault. While Joe argued that murder was way worse, Kilstein held on to his opinion that the stigma attached to assault made it a worse crime. This resulted in one of the very rare moments when Joe Rogan lost his cool on the show. He actually began to yell at Kilstein, calling him crazy, and even telling him that he's talking nonsense. Joe and Milo Yiannopoulos Reputed as one of the most controversial figures of today, Milo Yiannopoulos isn't everyone's best friend. Milo is a prominent figure in far-right politics, who once served as the editor of Breitbart News. Due to his many contentious opinions, he has been banned from several social media platforms, including Twitter and Facebook. His time at Breitbart came to an end after he was hit with accusations that he supported romantic relationships between adults and children. With this backdrop, it was obvious that the exchange between Joe and Milo would be less than friendly. After Joe mocks Milo's claim of being a Catholic, the guest didn't seem too amused. However, the two continued to throw hits at each other, resulting in an awkward conversation about the merits of religion. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.